following is a presentation of the Big Ten Conference. Big Ten football. For more than 125 years, it's been home to some of the sport's most iconic programs, historic venues, legendary players, Hall of Fame coaches, and bitter rivalries. The Big Ten Championship and a trip to the Rose Bowl on the line. The memories are a reminder that the past is so often a prelude to the present and future as another Big Ten football season kicks off. Harrison all the way to the house for Ohio State. Bulldozes his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Indiana. How about that? That music means it's time for college football. And the Big Ten on CBS brings us to Bloomington, Indiana, Memorial Stadium, where the marching 100's on the field, and our matchup brings us the number three team in the country, the Buckeyes of Ohio State, against the hometown Hoosiers of Indiana. A lot of cream and crimson, and also a lot of scarlet and gray Shipped in from Columbus for this one. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. My partner is Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell, down on the field. It's got an old feel, but a new feel to it, partner. <laughs> we started this thing together 31 years ago. Here we are doing a Big Ten football game today. You no, know, now, since this was announced, I just like had a flood of memories as a player, the teammates, the friends. All the great games we did together, and then especially the players that we've met along the way. I mean, we've done some of the iconic names. We've been lucky enough to be there. Yeah, and we just didn't take it Big Ten-wise <laughs> back in the days when, by the way, it was the Big Ten when right? we started. There were 10 teams then. We took it worldwide a couple times. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nestler with Gary Danielson. Welcome to Tokyo, Japan. Gary, it's been a long trip. It's been a long wait for Wisconsin. Their task is at hand, a Michigan State team that's very tough. And what a strange setting. This is a great league. The Big Ten is a great league, and I'm proud to represent us. Here we go. We got the Roses right here. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Great job representing us in the Rose Bowl. Congratulations on the Big Ten Championship. Thank you. We've seen rushing leaders, passing champions, linebacker U to Heisman's in the big house. From the huddle to the broadcast booth, from Big Ten player to Big Ten head coach, and the GOAT when he was just a lamb. That's some of the things we saw the first time. We're looking for more of that starting here today. Number three team in the country, Ohio State. They come in last year, average 44 points a game. They've made the college football playoff three of the last four years. They look like they're loaded again, Gary, especially at wide receiver. You know, I think it's so apropos that they're playing here in, in Indiana, the Indianapolis 500, because this Ohio State football team is like a, a race car. <laughs> I mean, and they've got engine, they got players, maybe the, I think two best play receivers as a tandem in college football they've got the firepower all around except for one little thing one little thing is cj strouds in houston justin fields in chicago and uh, who's going to fill those shoes now that's a quarter well i it's going to be guys that have never taken a snap for ohio state in a meaningful way and these two guys kyle mccord or devin brown kyle mccord's going to take the first snap but the competition is not over and both of these guys have to understand like the analogy of the indy 500 they just don't want to put this fancy car into the wall let it purr for a while let it percolate because they've got weapons all around them Take your time, the big plays will happen. So we got two drivers today. And here come the Buckeyes. A 
11 and 2 a year ago. One of those losses in the college football playoff, the other one to Michigan. And that's always stuck in Buckeyes fans' throats. Indiana, meanwhile, back in 2020, the COVID year, and 19 as well, Tom Allen had a really good team, and they were the surprise of the Big Ten. They've fallen on hard times since then, and with that, you go to the transfer portal, and coaches brought in a lot of new players That's to right. try to shore things up. And, it, and it's wonder, is it going to work? Because usually the Big Ten teams that are trying to leap up to Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, they kind of develop their players. That's not how you do it anymore. you got to go acquire guys, and they've acquired a lot of players for IU. Can they mesh together? And if they mesh together, they're going to have to do it with new quarterback. Yeah, a new quarterback. You talk about a quarterback controversy or battle or whatever you want to call it. We still don't know which one of these two guys are starting today. Pretty much assured we'll see both of them, but I think for sure the style of attack for IU will be to slow it down a bit and run their quarterback no matter who it is. So the Hoosiers and the Buckeyes. And Coach Allen bringing them out in front of the home crowd. Here comes Indiana. Can they pull off an upset at home? We're going to find out shortly. The Big Ten on CBS is sponsored by Sonic. All State. Cadillac Escalade IQ. And by the Home Depot. Memorial Stadium set for Indiana and the Hoosiers. There's your two quarterbacks warming up. Let's check in third member of our team on the field, Jenny Dell. Jenny. Well, Brad, when your star quarterback goes to the NFL, there's always a cause for concern. The relationship between the QB and the receiver, it is so key. But Buckeyes fans, they can just take a deep breath, a nice sigh of relief, if you will, because Marvin Harrison Jr. and Kyle McCord, these two go way back. The two attended St. Joseph's Prep in Philly and were teammates on three consecutive state title teams, both committed to Ohio State in 2019. And while you're all familiar with Harrison and his accolades, he told me he had way more confidence in McCord and his success at the next level than he even had in himself. Guys, these two are best friends, and Harrison said that connection translates onto the field. It seems like we're about to witness some magic. They're going to get a chance to hook up on a bigger scale here today. Ohio State won the toss and deferred. It is hot in Bloomington on the field, close to 110, 86, with a high expected between 88 and 90. They played a lot in this series. 28 straight wins is the bad news for Indiana. Last win, 1988, under Bill Mallory. Jaden Felding will tee it up. Coach Allen, his eighth year in Bloomington. Ryan Day on the other side, fifth year and 45 wins and only six losses. Jalen Lucas, maybe the most dangerous Hoosier, awaits Felding's kick and we're underway in the Big Ten. And he'll let it go. And they'll bring it out and start their offense and we'll immediately look at who's trotting out to play quarterback. The anticipation. Remember that the team and the quarterbacks know no one else does. Right. And they were made aware of that earlier in the week. Looks like it's going to be number 15, and that's Brendan Sorsby. As we take a look at the Papa John's starting lineups, very inexperienced. Both quarterbacks, they'll both play today, but Brendan's going to get the nod on the first snap. And how different opening with two tight ends last year was spread against Ohio State. Two backs as well. And they're running option. And Sorsby's going the wrong way. Gonna lose a couple. Wow, 
Papa John's lineups offensively along with Soresby. Here's the group that'll join him. We mentioned Jalen Lucas. They'll put him in five different spots today, and he's the top returner in the Big Ten from a year ago. So he's dangerous in a lot of ways if they can get it in his hands. Loss of a couple. Second down and 12. Option to the left. No pitch. Soresby keeps. Almost got a first down. Going to be about a yard short. So the advice to young quarterbacks in a big game like this when you haven't played a lot is don't try to make a big play on every play. First down, he tried to do too much. This time, he just read what was there. Late flag came in. Brian Banks is our referee. Personal foul, targeting, number one, defense. That foul is on the further review. So they'll take a look at it, a targeting foul. Big Olsen, huh? Yep. He's going down. He's lowering his head. Yeah, is it <laughs> I mean, that's textbook of what you're not supposed to do. I mean, why are you lowering your head on a play like this? Kind of goes with his shoulder. Yeah, he did. Tries to go with his shoulder. Maybe he'll get away with it. But you put yourself in jeopardy, don't you? You put yourself in the jeopardy for the replay booth when you do that. He's saying, I got him with the shoulder. Hey, he might be right. He might be. It's unbelievable. And talking to Gene Steratore about an hour ago, just so we had communication right. with him, I said, Gene, we'll try not to get targeted <laughs> on the Too first early. play. It was the second play. Gene, what do you think? You were only one play behind, Brad. <laughs> I give you credit for that one, my friend. And, and I agree with what you're saying. I think the defensive player commits to this tackle prior to that runner being down, the quarterback in this case. Although when the contact occurs, he is down. We're going to have the announcement right now by Brian Banks, but I think they'll pass on targeting. Number one can remain in the game. It's third down. No targeting. So we got just enough shoulder, and he'll stay in there. God, you got to believe it. Right now, Davison's going, oh, thank God, all the work I put in, and I get right. to continue to play. And I, you know, one of the things I like about it, that call is if it's targeting to me, it's got to be clear targeting, you know? I will say one thing about Ohio State fans. That's one thing they don't want to talk about is targeting. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> I take you back to the Georgia game last year. Right. So it's third down and one after a nice pickup by Soresby. Josh Henderson with him in the backfield. And whistles will stop play. Another flag. Ball start, number 82, offense. Five yard penalty. It's still third down. Bradley Archer jumped, and so that's going to make this third down more difficult. Ohio State's defense, led by Tommy Eichenberg, two time captain and All American linebacker. And they're going to try to prevent a third down and six now. Three wide outs to the top. Soresby is yet to throw. He will here. Throw short. Henderson trying to break the tackle. Not going to get there. Ohio State just holds on for dear life. And it was Eichenberg holding on to his leg. Yeah, great open field tackle by Steel Chambers that time. You know, the athletes for Ohio State, man to man, you've got them. Make that tackle or it could be a first down. And Chambers does a wonderful job. Going to force the punt. First of the game, James Evans in to kick. Evans, another one of those guys out of pro kick in Australia. Aussie putter. He's going to do not an Aussie kick here. He's going to blast this thing all the way down to the 13 yard line. Abuka tried to escape on the return, didn't get much. Great punt. And that'll switch the field. Give Ohio State, go, after a 56-yard punt, they're going to be inside their own 20-yard line. To the Buckeyes, Kyle McCord at the controls, about to take the field, and here comes number six. As so we take a look at our Papa John's starting lineups and the story on Kyle. Mount Laurel, New Jersey, as Jenny told you, 12 two career games, only one start in there. He has thrown three touchdown passes in relief duty, but now it's his team, at least for the opening series. We're going to see both quarterbacks on both teams today. 
Travion Henderson back and healthy. The tailback. Marvin Harrison in motion, and it's Henderson. Nice job by the Indiana defense in Ohio State on their first snap. Loses two. Rest of the offense for the number three team of the country. Looks like this. Travion Henderson, as I mentioned, under 600 yards last year, but over 1,200 the year before when he was healthy. Second down and 12 now at the 18. Blitz off the corner. McCord throws that way out in the flat, a little bit low, but Harrison scoops it up. Got it within two yards of the first down. Defensively for Indiana, a lot of transfers, a lot of new faces, but then some familiar faces to Hoosier fans, including fifth-year senior and captain Aaron Casey at the linebacker spot. So besides the storyline of a new quarterback, the next question to be answered for Ohio State, two new tackles playing for this high productive offense from a year ago. They were 45% on third down a year ago, the Buckeyes. Henderson's got this one as he got to the edge, got the corner, turns it upfield, all the way to the 45 before he's run out of bounds. Nothing calms a new starting quarterback better than being able to run the football, right? And you're going to play the little counter OT right here. Follow the big guys. Good job by Donovan Jackson inside pulling one of the experienced guards. Both Jackson and Jones, the two guards, are going to help people on both sides of them. Help tackles Young and then help inside with Hinsman at center. And Abuka got a nice block out on the edge from his wide receiver spot, and that helped. Well, you, don't, pick up 19 you don't play yards. for Brian Hartman if you don't block as right. a wide receiver. Well, maybe Marvin Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> They'll try Anderson again. He took a big shot after a pick of a block four by Lewis Moore. We're talking about the wideouts blocking Abuka on the previous play. Watch Marvin Harrison. Yep, that's enough. Just get your guy turned. So you just get in front of him, and keep your feet moving, and look back so nobody falls on your legs. So he got it out to the 49. And a second down and seven. McCord from the shotgun. Fires it over the middle. That's complete. And that's a first down throw to Cage Stover, the tight end. Ohio State going two tight end. Key Scott and Cage Stover. Stover. One of, you know, one of the things that you like with these type of tight ends, Gee and Scott, can they catch the ball too? And yes, we know Stover is an athlete. Played three different positions for Ohio State in his career. He had two touchdown catches against Indiana a year ago. In this case, he's got him a first down. Yeah, remember, remember the national championship game? He got hurt in the first quarter. I think the last play of the first quarter. Accord. Double clutches and then missed Henderson out of the flat as safety valve. We've got a clock stopped with 9.53. It won't stop as often as it has in the past. New rule change this year. Yeah, it's been talked about for a long, long time. The coaches don't love it. They like their offensive plays, but it is making just a little bit safe. A few less plays. Six to eight less plays a game multiplied by 12. That's about a half or three quarters of a game for an offensive or defensive player. I'd like a $10 bill for every time you ask Steve Shaw to get that changed <laughs> that way. McCord got away. He's got good wheels. Got it down to the 35. Maybe inside to the 34. Lewis Moore cut him down. So if you're big time thrower and quarterback, you still have to be able to give your offense a few of these plays, these six yard scrambles. You've got high powered receivers. This is a passing team now built to get the ball to the wide receivers. But your quarterback has to give you a little bit extra like he did right there. There's the high powered part that we talked about a year ago. That's pretty good when you're first or second in all those categories. Third down and two right here. Oh, what a hit on Henderson. Aaron Casey, the guy I talked about, the captain. Linebacker wearing number 44, and that is a collision. Yeah, and they wonder if Ohio State will go for it on fourth down right here. It's in that territory where you might. 
Watch Casey come from just outside of the screen and goes untouched. Woo! <laughs> that was a hit. Yes. <laughs> I man the middle. And Gary said, Buckeyes are going for it. Fourth down and two. McCord under center. The play fake, quick throw out in the flat. First down and a bunch more. Scott, the tight end. And a first down for Ryan Day. You know, a little bit of that, I think, what is going to be the next wave of college football is the two tight end offense, the one that Georgia used last year. I think Alabama's going to feature more of it. You see Ohio State, it keeps the defense at odds on what to do. How do you match up? Do you bring an extra linebacker in? Do you keep a safety in? It's almost forcing the defense to make a decision with those two tight ends in the game. You see Chip Trano now in it tailback for the first time and he'll get the carry nice move to the outside inside the 20 a stiff arm a first down run out of bounds first and goal Buckeyes whoa did he make a nice yeah. stop cut in that backfield so train him is similar to Stover has played different positions in his career at Ohio State he's played linebacker running back you know he's transferred from, Ohio, from Arizona that little jump cut, they all work on it now. If you go to practice and watch these Big Ten or SEC running backs, they work on it every day, the drill. Get your feet together, plant, and jump to the side. He picked up 17 to get it first and goal at the seven. He's the tailback in the eye. Ryan Williams will take it this time to the corner, to the end zone. Touchdown. First time he touches it, Mayan Williams for the seven-yard score. He did, but that offensive line, remember, we talked about the tackles. Got to transfer Josh Simmons at left tackle right there, 71. Really doesn't have to block anybody on that play because, again, it's cleaned up by those tight end on the outside. I think this is exactly what Ohio State wanted. A little more balance at, because of your quarterback you don't have a first-round draft pick playing quarterback right now. Felding's extra point makes it a 7-0 Buckeye lead. Good-looking opening drive by the number three team in the country. 80 yards and 11 plays. Mayan Williams caps it off. 7-0 Ohio State. Eagles will take on the Patriots. All starts at noon Eastern. JB and the guys on the NFL today. Next Sunday, the NFL is on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. As we talked about the two tight ends and how teams are going to it more and more. Watch Kate Stover right here with a block and Scott right there and then led by the fullback this time. That's picture perfect. That's Ohio State Buckeye football back when we did this conference. <laughs> So a great looking opening drive, 11 plays and 80 yards, and they picked up a fourth and two, remember, on that drive. So well done. Let's see if Jalen Lucas could get his hands on a kickoff. From Felding. This time he will. Two yards deep. Got a little bit of a crease. And he got it out to the 34, and that shows you how dangerous he can be in open space. Well, and the kicker had to make the tackle. Got a late flag as well. He is quick. We met him on Friday. He's little. He better be quick. <laughs> he had two touchdown returns last year. Illegal block in the back. Number seven, receiving team. Well, that ruins that. After this is the goal from the spot of the foul. It's first down. Indiana. So we always talk about, you know, Rick asked us in the pregame, how do you upset a team like this? Well, first of all, IU can't beat IU. They lost yardage. Yeah. They've had penalties. Uh, this is on first down. They lost yardage. Now a penalty on a good return. You got to play solid football. So instead of being out at the 34 yard line, they're going to set up shop at about the 16. Oh, beg your pardon. It's inside the 10. Excuse me. From the eight. 
Play action, quick throw to the outside. Dangerous throw, incomplete. Denzel Burke right there. Did not back up a step that time. Two years start, the left side of your screen. Watch him read it. One. He's on it. He's on it. He's getting there. Freshman All-American two years right. ago. I, I kind of felt that the secondary for Ohio State kind of fought themselves a little bit last year. A couple of injuries, then they kind of lost their confidence. Kind of hard to run the option from where they are. They do have two backs. That's the set they ran it from last time. And they will pitch it on the edge, and it didn't go anywhere. Man, oh man. Lucas brought down another loss, and this is going to be tough yeah, to try to pick Josh, up a third in a mile. Yeah, that was Josh Proctor that time, one of the elder statesmen on this football team, but he's coming downhill to make the tackle. Watch number 41 you come from the right side of your screen. And here he comes, beats the block by the tight end that time, and gets him in the backfield. See, that's a nice thing. The option looks good on the blackboard, but there's a lot of guys to account for. Yeah, especially when you're inside your own 10. Yep. And now Sorsby's going to be taking a snap near his own goal line of the shotgun on third down and 11. From his own end zone, in trouble, got away. And he did get it back across the original line of scrimmage, but they're going to have to punt. So doing a lot of watching a little tape, doing a lot of reading about Ohio State. What they're hoping for the most is that the front four can put pressure on the quarterback. Tui Maluau, Sawyer, Kenyatta Jackson. Can they get those edge guys to be more of an attack pass rush and not have to ring the linebackers or safeties? James Evans, who hit a 56-yard punt last time. He'd love to air another one out. And a kick it from his own end zone. Abuka back on the other end. Boy, kicking in the middle of the field is dangerous. Ooh. Abuka takes it at the 34. Made the first man miss, but not the second and third. Nice coverage by the Hoosiers, but still good field position for the Buckeyes. With five minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Buckeyes, their opening drive took them to the end zone. We'll see what drive number two does. But you know also is amazing? The key to the game that I wrote down before I saw that clip, <laughs> same exact thing. Oh my goodness. 30 years plus later, <laughs> tackling in space when you're playing elite athletes, they're going to catch some passes, but you can't let a new quarterback throw a five-yard pass for a 50-yard game. All right. McCord led the opening drive of 80 yards. He's in the shotgun with Travion Henderson behind. Henderson again hitting the backfield. Nice job by the Indiana defense. That time Carr came up and made the hit. A new front four basically transfers. They have more bodies on this IU defense than they did a year ago. They believe they can stand up. More bodies, stronger bodies, better athletes. But is the cohesion there? You know, first game, almost all new guys. They got guys from the Big 12, from the MAC, all over the place on that defense. McCord's got all day to throw. And he goes deep and just over the outstretched arms of Julian Fleming. Had a little bit too much on it. Basically a two-man route this time. Play action pass. Fleming's going to come across in the deep post. Play action pass. One guy short, one guy behind it. I think he did have Marvis and Harrison short, but I don't mind him going for the whole throw on this one. Showed his arm on that one, that's for sure. Just threw the hands of Fleming a little too far out in front of him. Now let's see if this IU pass rush, Andre Carter, number one. They're the one. He's the one they're hoping can make some plays. Third down and 10. McCord. The throw is complete, but there's the tackle after the catch that Gary just talked about a minute ago. And the Buckeyes will have to kick. So when you talk to Matt Guerrero, defensive coordinator for IU, who, by the way, coached at Ohio State just a year ago, yep. he said, we have to disguise. We cannot let the young quarterbacks know who to throw to prior to the snap. They did a good job that time. It looked like they were coming. Then they bailed and forced the th short throw to the outside. That looked like a replay of what we showed Almost <laughs> from exactly. 29 years ago. Right. Same pass, same part of the flat, you know same tackle. 
And Lucas just have to get everybody out of the way yeah. and let it go. Great exchange of punts right there for IU. A little bit of room right now, maybe a breath of fresh air for this football team. Their offense gets another shot at the four-minute mark of the first quarter when we come back. My fellow global citizens, look. You love watch CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. And you can catch Gary on with the HQ gang after our game is done here today. We promised you two quarterbacks for the Hoosiers. And we deliver on our promise. Here comes Taven Jackson. As it says, another one of those transfers. This time, an Indiana kid who tried it at Tennessee comes home. Actually played in three games for Tennessee. But here's his first official snap for Indiana. First down at the 19. Good run off the right side by Lucas. David Jackson, Greenwood, Indiana. His older brother, Trace Jackson Davis, great player at Indiana in, in hoops. He's with what, Golden State now? Right? Yes, he is. Don't get to shoot a lot there, I don't. <laughs> you guys. Yeah, really. Of you. <laughs> Second down and six. Two backs. They ride the first back and get it to the edge. To Lucas again, he's short of the first down. So here's the challenge when you have young quarterbacks and you're playing as an underdog. How much do you give him? How much do you give your quarterback that's enough to beat him? Ohio State, you can't let him come in here with no firepower, but not too much that they overload and end up, you know, doing detriment to their football team. And that's the balance you gotta look for. You gotta have enough game plan, but not too much. Third down and three for Taven Jackson in the offense. Hoping to stay on the field on this drive, and it's the option pitch to the edge. And getting the edge in the first down is Lucas. Run out of bounds. He needed three. He got five. So that time, Jackson just carried it just enough that Josh Proctor, number 41 to the outside, had to honor the quarterback, and he was a step late getting there in the alley and allowed the running back to get to the outside to make that first down by Lucas. And that's going to make the Indiana offense feel a little better about themselves right now. And the clock is running. Exactly. They want to shorten the game. They want to use a lot of clock before they snap it. No hurry to snap it in the play clock. Jackson loads, fires, long, too long, incomplete. And a flag. Did flag come out at the end? Intended for Cam Camper, their top I didn't receiver. Well, we say we got a flag down somewhere. I don't see it. Okay. I'll pick it up. And it disappeared just like that from your screen. <laughs> Good coverage, coverage that time. There. Yeah, nobody really to go to. Good coverage. Bracketed pretty well. Again, good, another good play by Burke. They're expecting big things from Burke this year. Josh Henderson, the single setback, although Lucas is a motion man. Henderson going to be swarmed under right at the line of scrimmage. Two in the low out. Coming off the edge. And Ohio State, I don't know if they realized they were going to be facing Navy here in their opening game. <laughs> we knew the option was coming, but yes. maybe they didn't. Shotgun Navy is what they're facing. That didn't work out so well against Notre Dame in no, the opener. Didn't. But we did one of those games back in the day when Navy played Ohio State and went pretty good game. I mean, was that in, yeah, it was a while back, back in Maryland and Baltimore, I think that game was. Third down and 10. Final 90 seconds of the first quarter. Straight up the gut. Be well short of the first down. So this is where fourth the, down at about five. This is where the IU fan has to be patient. Okay? Little boo birds right there. But for this football team, the way they're playing, third and ten it, with a young quarterback is not a good call. And if they can end the first quarter down only seven to nothing, exactly. they'll take that, I think. Let this clock go down. Let this clock go down all the way. Use every second of it before you punt. 
James Evans, you look behind him, second best single season ever in Indiana history last year, punting the football. Good job, under 10 seconds. This one's going to cause a fair catch around the 21 yard line for Mabuka. So 40 seconds remaining first quarter. Tommy Allen's Hoosiers hanging tough with the number three Buckeyes. Here in the late stages of the first quarter. Sunny, hot day, and Ryan Day with another high-powered football team. Yeah, and how patient will Ryan Day be? Remember, since he's been to Ohio State, they've kind of changed their image. They're now a passing team. The last three starting quarterbacks that Ryan Day's been a part of, first year, all made it to New York as Heisman candidates. How long will he be patient and continue to run the ball, two tight ends, or will he say, Oh, I'm itching to throw the ball here. Let's see if he's itching for Kyle McCord to let one go here. He will, but it's a safe throw underneath to Marvin Harrison. who got about eight. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it in this football game. I think Harrison every game. You no, know, remember, Marvin Harrison and Buka can't be covered by NFL corners <laughs> one on one. All right. No one's going to cover him one on one. IU defense has to confuse the quarterback. I still think Harrison gets 10 catches in this game. A lot of people think number 18 might get a trip to New York for the Heisman thing if he has the kind of season he had a year ago. Here's Travion Henderson. First down, big collision in the backfield with Lewis Moore, but he picks up the first down. And let's see, they ran towards Josh Simmons. You know, they had an All-American tackle last year at that left tackle spot. Bringing in those tight ends, but let's see what we did. Number 71 is right here. Let's take a peek. Reaches out. Nobody to block. That's easy, no matter who you are right there, right? Stretch it out. Good first quarter. Big 10 on CBS. We've completed quarter number one. Third-ranked Buckeyes in front of the Hoosiers. Back in Bloomington, Indiana. Third-ranked Ohio State on the road. And only one score so far. That was an 80-yard march for the Buckeyes on 11 plays to open things up for their offense. But the Hoosiers defense has done a pretty good job so far in bottling up the big-name receivers on the outside. Travion Henderson has had a couple of good runs. Again, it's Kyle McCord at the controls. And Henderson behind him on the first snap, quarter number two. From the 34, now some shifts to put the receivers in tight on the right side. McCord over the middle. Abuka trying to avoid the tacklers, picked up about nine. Bring up second down and short. Another first down throw. Look at that, look at that winning percentage of Ryan Days. Here's a flip out to Fleming. And he got it to midfield. Talking about that winning percentage of Ryan Day at 45 and 6 brings us to test our knowledge with our Avalak trivia question. Which head coach has the highest winning percentage in major college football history? Minimum 50 games. Think it over. We'll give you the answer in a little bit. Abuka in motion to the slot on the right side. Hoosiers thinking about a blitz. Yeah, they're showing from the field that they're going to be coming. But last time, they ran a zone blitz from this look. McCord will keep it on the ground to Henderson. He avoided one tackler, somehow got out of there and picked up about four. Yeah, but I think this is going to come back with holding. Was it Fryer this time, number 70? Holding, number eight. Eight, Offense. tight end. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's still first down. And Stover will go out after picking up the penalty. So, so far, I thought Kyle, Kyle McCord has taken his time, not trying to make too much right. happen, keeping the game under control. See the left side right at the end there. He kind of gets that last blocking from behind right there, kind of dragging his guy down, yep, right in the official's face. He doesn't look like the moment's too big for him, that's for sure. No, not at all. And he rifles one on a slant out to midfield, and that's complete to Fleming. Yeah, I really like Julian Fleming, and I was really impressed with his, when he kind of stepped up in that national championship game, 
when Marvin Harrison got dinged with that hit, came in there, made the plays, looked comfortable. I don't know if there's, you know, if you think about it, I don't know if there's a better third receiver on yeah. the team. When, the when you look at their whole receiving Absolutely. core, you go, wow. <laughs> For sure. Second down and 10 now as they're back at the original line of scrimmage. Henderson, oh, not a nice cut, a nice run of first down and 14 before they bring him down. Yeah, this is the stretch play that Henderson, part of the reason he was so good two years ago when he rushed for second most rushing yards in Ohio State history as a true freshman, over 1,200 yards. You see those quick feet, quick feet, boom, 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 just wait, and then get into the secondary. Coach Day told us yesterday he said I can't wait to see him out there because he's healthy and he's hungry and he's playing like it right yeah, now and number six likes him in there too I'll tell you that right now <laughs> for sure McCord again will look to the sideline you know if you listen to the crowd right here you can understand why I think this is a comfortable opener for Ohio State even though it's on the road they might have more fans here than the Hoosiers do at all this time they rattle him a little bit. He throws out nice. and got it complete. Nice. Yep. Tough oh. throw out to Abuka. Off balance throw. Kept it safe to the sideline. What I'm talking about is as this football team gets measured at Ohio State, I mean, it's not just us. Every Ohio State fan watching this game is going and measuring this team today on how well they can play against Notre Dame in three weeks. That's right. Okay. So this road game is a good test. They get out there, but there's no crowd noise. They don't not have to fight crowd noise, but you get used to traveling, get on the road, make some plays, not in the comfort, and play, a, you know, like an Akron at home. Second down and five at the Indiana 32. Travion Henderson and brought down short of the first down. Nice play by Jacob Magnum for our. So let's see what these guys can do up front. They run left again. Oh, good time that time. Donovan Jackson, number 74. All Big Ten left guard. As I say, he's playing as the two first-year players. They're comfortable with him. I bet he's talking to both guys right and left, helping them out on every play. Third down is short. Williams, the tailback in the eye. He's the one that scored the touchdown for Ohio State. And this time he's going to get there. Yep. Great job by Aaron Casey. Yep. Again. Beautiful play. I think they're going to line up and run it again, though. But you can only make one play at a time. And Casey, again on the short yardage play, kind of goes back door and just trips up the ball carrier. Douglasville, Georgia native, the second big hit. Be a huge stop for IU defense right here. That's a four and fourth down and two. Ohio State converted. Now their touchdown drive. And play is going to get stopped here before the fourth down and two snap. Yeah, right now Ryan Day's going, should we just put a field goal on the board and make it 10-0, or should we go for this? We're going to find out that decision in about a minute. AT&T 5G pylon cam. Buckeyes by a touchdown. <laughs> And it's fourth down. So right now, Ryan Day's going through. Should I let my kicker see what he can do? I'm going to need him sooner or later. Or do I challenge my offensive line and say, guys, you're new out there. Let's get this first down and show me what you got. They'll move some bodies. They did on a fourth and two in the first quarter. They'll try it again here from the 29-yard line. This will be a huge stop for the Hoosiers. Well, they better block 44, right? He's been a freight train in the middle for the Hoosier defense so far today. High backfield again. Fourth down and two. And they're going to throw for it. McCord across his body. Intercepted by the Hoosiers. Noah Pierre. Pierre's got it for the Hoosiers with a turnover. Actually, Philip Dunham. Yes. Nick Toomer, number 15 for IU, knocks down the player who is going to get the ball. Watch him knock him down. That was number one. Then he tries to throw across his broad body, and all of a sudden, a mistake. It was supposed to be the back and the flat. He gets knocked down. Quarterback tries to make something happen, and he sure did, didn't he? Dunham steps right in there and heads to the edge and got it out to the 33-yard line. 
He's got the belt. Talk about not only getting a stop, but getting an interception as well. Let's see what the Hoosiers offense can do with it now. Taven Jackson will stay at the controls. What a play by Toomer. Knocking down the number one receiver, forced the quarterback away. Lucas trying to get through a crease. Got a short game. Again, left side of your screen. Watch the play right here at the end. Knocks him down, and that's number one. Nobody to go to over there. So then he tries to make the play, and Dunnan is right on it. There's always that danger of throwing back across your body to the <laughs> yeah. middle. And it's, yeah, we all did it, though. Yeah, I know. That's because we all watch Favre and Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody can make that. Well, we all think we are. <laughs> Second down at six. Play action, quick throw, and a slant. Campbell, big gainer for the Hoosiers, down inside the 40. Well, about halfway through the season, Campbell went down, and the IU offense went down with it. But he's healthy. He is on a bit of a pitch count because it's been less than a year he's been hurt. But right there, you showed why they believe he's their number one receiver. Picked up 24 yards and a first down at the nice, Buckeye 39. Nice delivery of the ball as well. A little bit of life in the Hoosier offense. Longest play of the game so far. Here comes an end around. Carter trying to get to the edge. Ohio State does a nice job of stretching it out. Yeah, and you know who it was? Sonny Styles. We did not mention his name yet. He's the true sophomore. Played a year ago as a 17-year-old. He is an NFL player playing in college. Someday he'll play in the NFL. Like his dad. He'll be a kind of a hybrid player that runs this down. 6'3", 230 type guy. Safety linebacker, yes. whatever yep. it is. When you got Styles out there, you don't need to substitute as the other teams bring on tight ends or backs or three, t three wide receivers. He can play anywhere on the field. As you look behind Tate and Jackson. Turner, burner, first down. And that's the dive play. Remember we talked about this is really option offense from the shotgun. They're reading the end man of the line of scrimmage. They, as a lot of people say, if you can't block them, read them. And that time they read the defensive end and said, we'll just hand it off and run right by you. Christian Turner spent three years at Michigan, two at Wake Forest, now with his third team and a big first down for the Hoosiers to the 27-yard line. This time only about a yard. Nice stop by Michael Hall on the inside for the Buckeye defense. As we approach the midway point, second quarter. Deepest penetration for the Hoosiers today so far. Nice drive for Taven Jackson. So second down and nine from the 26. Here comes a blitz. Lucas trying to run by it. He got swallowed under, but he did get a nice game. <laughs> Brad mentioned it was timed out to the blitz. Watch it get picked up inside right here. Timed out. Oh, good job by Carpenter, number 50, the center. He sees it coming after he snaps it and stones it right at the line of scrimmage. Well, he got him and he was looking for somebody yep, else yep. to hit. Third down and five. Biggest third down of the day so far for Indiana. And Jackson on the option to the edge. And Lucas won't get there. Sonny Styles again runs it down from the outside, inside out. Lucas is fast, but so is Styles. His dad, Lorenzo, played a long time in the NFL. And a fourth down and seven coming up. Yep, pushes him right out of bounds. He didn't get him. Eichenberg was gonna. Indiana has a new field goal kicker this year, and they are not going to take a field goal attempt here. I, I'm not so sure about that. They're going to call timeout, aren't they? Well, we'll list it at fourth and seven and see what happens. Yeah, they're going to try to draw him off and get a little bit closer. Yep. Yeah. And, I, and I think he also wanted to use the clock. Remember, seven nothing for IU right now, keeping a game into yeah. the third quarter. Take as much clock as you can. 6.20 remaining in the half. Tom Allen 
is Hoosiers with a chance to score for the first time when we come back. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Adam Rick and BJ will break down the first half and deliver all the day's best highlights. Geico Halftime Report, about 6.15 from now. That 42-yard field goal brought out the Mellencamp music during the timeout. 7-3. <laughs> By the way, last time we were here, wasn't he in our booth with us? He might have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were all a lot younger then. <laughs> oh, the <a> young boy. <laughs> <laughs> good. Very good. At the one-yard line, Xavier Johnson. After the 26 on the kick return. So here's the problem with playing two quarterbacks is now what do you do right if you're Ohio State? You switch? Tom Allen talked with Jenny at the end of the first quarter about his quarterback situation. Coach, you got your two young quarterbacks struggling out there. What's the answer? Well, the plan against a great defense, and they're young. We plan to play both of them. That was the plan from the beginning, so they both continue to play, and they just got to grow up snap by step. You know, the bottom line is we're not going to put them in a tough position, so we're going to, you know, we got to run the football. We got to stay on the football field and help those guys out. Thank you, Coach. You're very welcome. Elio. They have to grow up play by play, no doubt. And they have helped the young quarterbacks as uh, we have an injury on the field. A couple of third down stops, an interception on fourth down, right. and a field goal. Okay, so that helps them, gets them a little bit of a production right here. Both guys, you know, I mean, it's different parts of the field you get it, but so far that one pass by Jackson over the middle has been the key play of the game for IU's offense. And unless they change their plan, Indiana plans to play both quarterbacks next week, too, just to find out which one they think is the best and then maybe go from there. Right. As David Jackson getting the pat on the backside after leading that scoring drive that ended in a field goal. That first down pass, the slant over the middle was the key play. What I'm saying is now it's hard to pull McCombs out of the court out of the game right now. You know, Devin Brown is itching to play, and everybody wants to see him, and we are gonna see him. Right now, Devin Brown, redshirt freshman, will take over the controls here for the Buckeyes, who did plan to play both quarterbacks as well. Milo Williams, who scored the touchdown earlier, picks up three. For Devin Brown, it was a close battle with Kyle McCord all the way. He wasn't, McCord wasn't named the starter until about Tuesday of this week. But the Gilbert, Arizona native missed the spring game when he broke his finger. And that kind of put him behind the eight ball a little bit in the quarterback competition. But he is one athletic dude. So, quote, all the inside information coming out of camp was that Devin Brown had had a great camp. Williams almost lost the ball. He tried to strip it. He re-grabbed it and got it out within a yard or so of the first down. Langham Farrar trying to rip that ball out of there. It'll be third down and one. I think the biggest difference between the two is Devin Brown just a tad more athletic when he runs the ball. Who knows? He might get a chance right here. Third down and a yard. Chip Drainham in the backfield with him. He's in the gun. Abuka joins the backfield and now retreats. And here is the run. And that's going nowhere, says Andre Carter. Nice play by the transfer, Andre Carter, out of Western Michigan. Well, they say he makes plays. He's big and he's fast, and this time he made a play in the backfield as he cuts underneath the block and makes the play. Look at that. Explodes off the line of scrimmage. Josh Simmons was not ready, did not handle it, and another play on short yardage by this IU defense. That's three of them in this game. And that's forcing Ohio State to punt. Jesse Merkel to kick. Galen Lucas backpedals and takes it to 13. Changes direction. Lucas still going across the 30. Here's why he was the top return man in the Big Ten Ooh, last year. Man. Woo. Nice run back by Jalen Lucas. 
And I mean, when he when actually when he comes in and meets you, you think, is this the paper boy that delivers? <laughs> I mean, I mean it really, this is the guy, but he's out here playing Big Ten football, and he is tough to tackle. Another one of those guys we <laughs> had the pleasure of covering, right? No kidding. Back in the day. A little earlier, we asked you our Black. trivia question. It was, which head coach has the highest winning percentage in major college football history? We told you how high Ryan Days was. Is he number one? No. Walter Camp won 92% of his games. Not bad. And there they are. Yeah, but he's the only one with a color photo, so he wins, right? He, yeah, we wanted to get a black and white picture, but we didn't. <laughs> First down at the 42 after that 28-yard punt return by Jalen Lucas. And now sliding down is Steven Jackson. I'll and tell you, a, a three-minute drive for IU here would be huge. With any kind of points at the end would be Absolutely. huge. Absolutely. Even a first down because the clock will keep running until you get under two minutes. So even a first down here. Take your time. What's the hurry, IU? Take your time. Second down and two, Lucas. Adam. Nope. Thought they should have bled that clock a little bit more in my mind. Got it to midfield, it's gonna be third and two. First four possessions didn't look good at the beginning. Field goal at the end of the last one by Freeman that hit the upright and went through. And they would love to get another three or seven. We're under three minutes. And right now, they'd love to get three yards. That would give them a first down. Yes. Henderson and Lucas flanking Jackson in the backfield. And there's the first down by Henderson as he blasts his way to the, I beg your pardon, that's Turner to the 45. And that'll bleed 30 seconds off the clock. Remember, the clock would have started, would have stopped right here and given more time. But right now, it bleeds out, and IU is feeling that they can run the rest of this half out and either put points on the board or give a chance for a field goal, but at least keep it away from the Buckeyes. Well, Christian Turner's picked up two first downs on the ground for the Hoosiers. He's in there with Lucas and Jackson. On a first down, the 45. Lucas, only a couple that time. And now we're going to work our way inside two minutes. Well, you can tell this triple option offense because you must establish the dive play to run the triple option. You're usually not diving with a 170-pound guy. Hey. <laughs> He's shifty, though. It doesn't ripple the water very much <laughs> when you go through. Uh, nice job by Taven Jackson. Again, smart use of the clock. No real hurry right here. Now they up to the line on second down and eight. If they get a first down, it will stop as it used to. And not going to get it this time. Got it to the 40. That's Turner. And it's going to bring up third down at five. We're going to work our way under a minute here. Now do you let Jackson put it in the air here? I'm not so sure about that. I wouldn't mind a quarterback draw here or a quick screen to the outside. I would not really want to throw the ball downfield too much right here. Wouldn't want that pass rush for Ohio State to get a sack. And keep it on the ground, but Henderson didn't get much. It's fourth that, down. Was that Eichenberg on that one? Somebody centered up that tackle. It was. Uh, that's him. 35 has a tendency to be around the ball. St. Ignatius linebacker, brother plays for the Miami Dolphins. Oof. Yeah, that was, that was a, even his new coach, James Laronitis, would like that type. That's right. It? Yep. New grad assistant, James Laronitis, used to do that same thing when he played here. Tommy had 120 tackles a year ago. He just had a big one there, and it brings up fourth down when we come. He's winning three to seven. <laughs> yeah, they got a huge fourth down here. They're out of field goal range, even though we know that Chris Freeman has a big leg, but not that big. Now, this is a big fourth down for Indiana. No, they're not doing that. They're trying to draw them off sides. They're not going for it. Oh, my. Jackson rolls, throws, broken up, incomplete. I don't understand that. 
Why would you do that? Josh Proctor broke it up, and the Buckeyes take over. What are you doing? You're giving them the ball at the 40-yard line. They've got two NFL receivers. You'll see them in a second. Run under a nice lead. Very fortunate it wasn't picked off. If it would have been, it would have been yes. a pick six going the other way. Yeah, I don't like this call. Don't like the strategy. I just gave Tom Allen a lot of credit for a lot of gamesmanship. Running the clock out, and he gives the Buckeyes the ball at the 40-yard line. Proctor, the reaction with Eichenberg. And here comes the Buckeyes now with a chance. They've got a timeout left and 38 seconds to work. McCord got hammered as he threw. Oh, really? Incomplete. Oh, he did get hammered. And Harrison's hurt. Trying to make that catch. Wow. The flag down. There's his left shoulder as he reached out. Was he extended? After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct foul, taunting number 22, defense. Oh boy. 15 yard penalty for the succeeding spot. Automatic first down. It's number 22 first. This is what happens if you foul. stretch out and you land on that stretched out shoulder. Just oh. like that on his elbow, you jam it up. That's kind of like the Bryce Young injury. Remember when he landed on the ground with an extended arm, his passing arm? And Jamari Sharp is the guy called for the unsportsmanlike conduct, the taunting on uh, imitating putting his sword yeah. back. And they didn't need that. McCord down the middle. Got it to the tight end. Breaking tackles, stiff arms his way. Remember, Paged over to the 21. Now remember, the clock will stop. It's under two minutes. The old college rules take over. Easy pitch and catch here on this one. Wide open. Gets a great release over the middle of the field and put it right on him. Scoring position, plenty of time. McCord, first down from the 22. Got it down. Oh, he dropped it. Great Incomplete. hit. Yeah. Great hit at the end of the play by Tate. The true freshman. Sanguinetti. He did have it. Yeah, oh no, he dropped it. He dropped it before he brought before he was hit. But you're right again. I mean, let's see. Yeah. I don't know. They he didn't throw flag. that ball. Remember the replay official in the booth can stop the clock and call targeting if he wants. Here's the first look we gave you. Oh yeah, I think that's targeting. I mean, I've seen worse called. No flag. Here we go. 14 seconds left, second down and 10. Buckeyes, blitz coming. I'm a cord. Hit from behind. The ball is out. Casey trying to chase it down. I don't know if they're going to call us a fumble or not, but Aaron Casey thinks so. Indiana ball. They did call it, but they usually, the officials, air in the where for a fumble, not a pass, and they come and fix it in replay. Let's take a look if the ball was thrown or not. Aaron Casey's having himself a game. Isn't he? There's Farrar, Magnum Farrar from behind. One more time. Go back here. Let's look at this again. Incomplete pass. Yeah. It's third down. And they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Took him a while. His arm moving forward. Yeah, I think the ball was coming forward. I think that's an incomplete pass. Gene Steratore is with us from New York. The first look was a little clearer. I agree with you, Gary. The Ooh. arm does just start forward with firm possession, too, right. by McCord. As soon as that arm goes forward with possession, you've got a forward pass. It's a great job. And I agree with letting it go, too, Gary, for the same reasons you mentioned. You, you have to let that play play on. Yeah. That hand is coming forward, even though it's a perfect block yeah. in basketball turns. But I believe his arm was going forward on the play, and that's a pass. It was a great rush by Magno Farrar and a great reaction by Casey on the other end to just stay with the ball. And with seven seconds to go, now I think they'll also look at the clock. If they call it a pass, they'll look at the clock and maybe move it back to 13 or 14 seconds. See, if it's called incomplete, right there when it hits the ground is when the play is dead. 
And we'll take a look with the game clock in the corner. And should stop. Yeah, right, right there, around 11, 11. 11 seconds, yep. which gives you another play. At seven, I think you, you kick, the, kick field the field goal. goal. I think yeah. you kick the field goal. So that's so a big difference. A lot has been happening here. Okay. Right? <laughs> Tom Allen goes for it on fourth and four from the 40. Marvin Harrison gets hurt on a play, landing on his elbow. We have a taunting penalty. My, we have a targeting that wasn't called. We have a fumble in her. Did I cover it all? That's a lot. I think you got it. <laughs> And we have an incomplete pass. We think. We think. Brian Banks will have the final say on how much clock's going to be returned to the Buckeyes. After review, the rule on the field stands as an incomplete pass. It's third down. Please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. Please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. Yep. Well, we got the time right. They got the down right and the call. It's such a great play, though. Magram Farr coming off the edge. Well-designed blitz. Ohio State doesn't pick it up. Just a half second early. Marvin Harrison's back, too. So that time in between to try to straighten everything out has given him a chance to catch his breath and move that shoulder around and now it's third down and 10 with 11 to go when we return time for ohio state to talk things over on the sideline with 11 seconds to go you saw marvin harris back on the field here's the play where he came down and fell on his left shoulder elbow shoulder and winced yep he reaches up for his shoulder but he's back on the field xavier johnson's in the game as well five receivers for Kyle McCord, pressure coming. And knocked down. What a play. Lewis Moore, he's been in on a lot of plays today. None better than that one. When you talk to the coaches, he was the one guy they said is really coming on for them in practice. Lewis Moore, former wide receiver. He was beat over the middle. Beautiful throw. I mean, you can't throw it any better than that. And Moore makes the play. If he doesn't, that's a touchdown. Jaden Felding, the brand new kicker for Ohio State, is out to attempt a 40 yard field goal. I, was, I mean, Indiana's close timeout. I'm going to let him think about it a little bit. I don't know if they had 11 guys out there. Five? Well, I think they did. We'll be back in 30 seconds to look at the kick. Jaden Felding, the sophomore out of League City, Texas, to try a 40-yard field goal. Kick on the way, and it is good. Perfect. So two young kickers, and both have hit from 40-plus. And in this case, stretches Ohio State's lead to a touchdown at 10-3. So it was a great timeout by Ryan Day to be prior to the fourth down play. I think he thought they were going to punt. But then Tom Allen goes for it. Day gets the ball at the 40-yard line, and it came close to being a seven points, but they get three out of it to go into halftime 10-3. They went 39 yards and four plays to get that field goal. And just three seconds remaining. Last five meetings, a little bit different at halftime. Ohio State over that course up by 21 plus and another the effect of the game clock you know a little bit only 56 offensive plays 30 by Ohio State and 26 by Indiana Dif little bit different field but remember IU we talked about this they were going to try to shorten the game by playing slow ball against IU excuse me against Ohio State Unless that guy can take it coast to coast, this will be, barring a penalty, the last play of the first half. But don't count out number 12. And they're going to line drive this to try to keep it away from him, and it's going to make it to the end zone. So Felding did his job on the kick to give him three points, and he does his job to keep it out of number 12's hands on the ensuing play. This was a knuckler, wasn't it? And our at and 5G pylon cam almost caught that thing. So one play from the 25 for Taven Jackson. Take a knee. If the IU faithful that came here today 
were told that it would be 10 to 3 at halftime. They would take it, I'm pretty sure. Yep. However, it should be 7 3. Yes. And there is the deal down to the final play of the second quarter. Yeah, good tough football game here in the Big Ten on CBS. Coach Allen's happy with it. Tommy Eichenberg and the Buckeyes might not be so thrilled as they head to the locker room. Yeah, but the best news for the Buckeyes is number 18 was out there playing at the end of the first half. That's true. Let's check in with Jenny on the field with Coach Day. Coach, there's a lot going on out there. you got two young quarterbacks going. How would you assess the first half? Well, I think we're playing well on defense. I think we need to do a better job converting in short yardage on offense. Um, you know, some things here and there. A couple penalties threw us off. I like the way we're coming off the ball, but we got to be able to convert on short yardage to keep drives going. You saw Marvin Harrison Jr. go down. Could you tell us what you saw from your perspective there? Uh, yeah, he's, he's fine. He went back in, and, and he should be fine. You're getting slowed down by Indiana right now. How do you come back and, and fight in the second half? Uh, convert on short yardage, yeah, because, I mean, we're, we're getting some decent movement running the ball, but we got to be able to convert on short yardage. Thank you, Coach. We'll look for that in the second half. The first half. Tough battle between the number three team in the country and unranked Indiana hanging in. Geico Halftime Report coming up next. Buckeyes only leading 10 to 3. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jenny's down on the field. You know, uh, we got maybe what we expected out of the Indiana offense so far, right. only three points. But their defense that was last in virtually every category a year ago not playing like that, did You it? know, I was thinking about the game, and, you know, they have as during intermission, I was thinking, like, what did I miss? Well, I really didn't salute the game plan so far by Matt Guerreri, the new defensive yeah. coordinator. He was at Ohio State. Nice blitz package, good short yardage defense. I thought he had a great first half. Yeah, and kept the high-powered Buckeyes to just 10 points, and that came on a late field goal that they probably shouldn't have given up had Indiana not gone on fourth down. And the Indiana defense, what Gary was talking about, will give you a little bit of a look right now. Yeah, and I did a little bit of everything, okay? We talked about, you know, what we said in 1994 applies today, and that means you got to shop short yardage and tackle in space. And they stopped short yardage a couple ways, behind the line of scrimmage and intercepting passes. So they did a little bit of everything, but the plays at the end right there, that deflection to stop that last drive was a big one to get out of the half. And that unit comes out to take the field against Ohio State working at their own 25-yard line. There's been the star of the show, the guy is rolling, 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 number 44. He's had some big plays defensively in that linebacker position for the Hoosiers. Cal McCord and the Buckeyes go with an end around on the opening snap, and it's going to get a nine-yard pick up for Abuka as we check in with Jenny. Well, I had a conversation with Coach Tom Allen, and I said, before the game, if I had told you it was going to be 10-3 at the half, what would you say? And his response was, that's exactly where we want to be. He's really proud of the way that this team has performed in the first half. He even complimented the poise of his young quarterbacks. He said that they need to continue to grow with the game, something that he said after the first half. Defensively, they're looking for two more takeaways. And guys, I have an update on an injury player uh, for the Hoosiers defensive back Brayson Bonds. He was shaken up in that second quarter. He is out for the rest of the game. Okay, Jenny, thanks. And talking about a guy that's had a good game and is Absolutely. shaken up is Lewis Moore yep. coming off. I wonder if it's just cramp. You know, it is, as we showed you, hot down on that field first game. And uh, you can cramp up fast. And he jogs off now, so that's maybe a good sign. Then he'll be back in the lineup. Meanwhile, the Buckeyes got nine on that first snap on the end of round, so it's second down and short. Yard to go from the 34. Dravion Henderson, the tailback behind Kyle McCord. He'll get the give. Oh, and a nice hit, and guess who? Player of the game, that's who. Man. The captain. You know, we've been talking about how this team has been rebuilt with transfers, Ness, but a guy that's stuck here yeah. is making the plays. Fifth-year senior out of Douglasville, Georgia. He had 10 tackles, two tackles for loss a year ago, and he's having that kind of game again today. And that offensive line for Ohio State is not getting off quick enough. 
They're double teaming and they're trying to slide to the linebacker, but he's beaten them to the spot. McCord on the slant and that's broken up. Incomplete. And it's a three and out. Andre Carter, I think, is the guy that got a hand on it. Remember, that after the first play was a nine-yard gain, Indiana gets a three and out. The drop that time by Andre Carter turning around and going backward. They expect Carter to rush. Another good defensive call by Guerrero. Ohio State only one out of seven on third down conversions, and that forces Murko out to punt again. And, of course, that means Jalen Lucas is on the other end. Lucas has to back pedal, gets it at the 13. He's had a 28-yard return already today. Dalen Lucas back to the middle of the field. And out to about the 35-yard line. Man, he's fun to watch. A year ago, I saw him go 71 yards on an option play against Purdue. And you could see what he had, but the All-Big Ten returner is showing it, isn't he? He sure is. All day long, 21 yards on that one. Had a 28-yarder earlier. Oh, limping and off. And uh, hopefully he's just cramping. Yep. No, uh, that one looked like he got twisted right at the end of the play. So Jackson remains the quarterback. Each Indiana quarterback only completed one pass in the first half. And they'll keep it on the ground. Pick up a couple. Christian Turner again. Talk about the trends of the first half. McCord, 94 yards passing out of 10 out of 16 first two quarters. Devin Brown played one drive, had one rush. Indiana quarterback Soresby started. Jackson has been in ever since. His opening two drives. And Marvin Harrison, just two catches for 18 yards and shaken up, attempting to catch another one. But he did come back into the lineup for Ohio State late in the quarter. There's no doubt that the IU short yardage defense has been the story of the game so far. Jackson throws incomplete. Broken up. Again. Denzel Burke. Two year starter. Freshman All American in 2021. Not quite the year in 22, but. Looked like he's back to form to me, yep. doesn't it? No doubt. Timed it perfectly. And it forces a third down and long. Third and eight for Tabin Jackson. Shifting on the front wall for Ohio State. Pretty quiet. To Mello out right there. Pretty quiet all day. Watch number 44 on the other side. And again, they shift their tackles from one side to the other. Pressure coming straight away on the quarterback run. Jackson not going to get there. Got to the 41, though. And Big Benson got the tackle. That's fourth down and three. Tui Molo was pushed right by that time by Carter Smith, number 65. But at least he forced the quarterback up in the pocket, cleaned up, and the Buckeyes get the stop. That guy's been a handful for a lot of people in that Buckeye uniform. Big year last season. They expect even more this year. And Forcing a punt from James Evans. He's hit some bombs today. 53-yard average on three kicks. Got this one a mile in there. This is too deep. It's going all the way to the eye of Indiana in the end zone. Like to have that one back maybe a little bit. Three minutes into the third quarter. Buckeyes leading the Hoosiers 10-3. Because he not only yes. plays in the backfield, yep. he's in the slot. He's their main return man. He's probably their most electrifying player they have. And that would change things for the Hoosiers for sure. Here's McCord on first down and a throw to Fleming, who got about four. Again, Aaron Casey makes a tackle, keeping everything in front of him. That's the object. Not a lot of easy throws and yards after catch have there been in this game. Buckeye, for the Buckeyes. Fans, Buckeye fans looking at those possessions going, oh, that's not what we expected. Here's tight end Stover for a first down. That's what you get the feeling, though. You get the feeling that Ryan Day likes to throw the ball. Yeah. Okay, and it's tough for him. Yeah, we talked about short yardage, but his offense is built around a drop back passer now. When Urban Meyer rebuilt Ohio State with Ryan Day, he has. Ryan Day to make better quarterbacks. I want Heisman Trophy quarterbacks. And to do that, you got to throw the ball. And it's rebuilt that way. And another injury, and that's Jamari Sharp. 
Hoosiers don't have a lot of depth on defense. The guys that they've transported in here um, have played well today, but they don't have a lot behind them. We'll take a break and check on him. It's hot out there. The Big Ten on CBS is sponsored by X. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Subway. And by FanDuel. Now you go back a long ways, first year quarterbacks for Ohio State. You talk about a list. I mean, you can go back to JT Barrett and those guys. Yep. Hit fifth in the Heisman voting in his first year as a starting quarterback. Yeah, since Urban rebuilt this team, it's been quarterback centric. Late Dwayne Haskins, third in the Heisman voting. So you have big shoes to fill. <laughs> Justin Fields, likewise, third in the Heisman. Now with the Chicago Bears as their starter, and most recently C.J. Stroud, fourth last year, and the starter for the Houston Texans. So, yeah, you got big shoes to fill when you're yeah. in the backfield and, and holding in, the quarterback. And remember, in the middle of that, when Haskins got the job, Joe Burrow left. That's right. <laughs> he, he was out here competing for the quarterback job, and Quinn Ewers went to Texas. Yep. We, well, that was a funny one. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> different. Just that there's been a lot of talent at that position. Sometimes so much that. They hit the portal, went someplace else to be a star and a Heisman winner and a starter for the Bengals. So it's a tough job to be the quarterback at Ohio State as it is any place. Anderson only a yard gain there. At some point, do you just let it rip here and let him go throw it? Or do you just keep going? You know, I, I actually was pretty impressed with Kyle's throws at the end of the half. And you can see the talent he has. Obviously, you don't get recruited at Ohio State to, to be run this offense if you can't throw from the pocket. Right. But everyone connected from this program expected that Devin Brown would get more of an opportunity in this game. McCord in the shotgun this time. Set the throw across the middle short, but Fleming swarmed under immediately by the Indiana defense again. Magna Farrar. So here's the one that Kyle McCord would have liked to stay with Harrison just a bit longer. Watch, coming down, Harrison will go jitter and go right there. Stop, and boom, he's gone for a touchdown if he throws that. Just a little bit longer now. Again, that's not a lot of experience, you know. C.J. CJ would, Stroud would make that play, but yeah. maybe not as a freshman. Only one conversion on third down, and it's third and five here. Pressure coming, going deep down the sideline. Contact back there, and there comes the flag as Harrison's knocked down before the ball got there by Kobe Miner. Interesting call, right? Third and five, takeoff. Balls to the outside. Pass interference, number yep, five. Jumped right into him, no doubt about the play. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. So they bail out Ohio State on a third down with the penalty and an automatic first down. I wonder if the play caller had told the coach down on the sideline that Harrison was open to deep the play before and they were <laughs> squatting on him and they wanted to go deep because he was. He'll take a breather after that collision. I think that was Brian Hartline talking to him. Offensive coordinator this year. Whoa, what a throw down the middle that was, and now Fleming's in the open field. He's got it all the way to the 20-yard line. You're right, that was a great throw, but that time, Julian Fleming knew he was going to get hit when the ball was in the air. He could feel the crowd, and he stayed with it. Here it comes. He knows the good of hits coming, and he takes the catch and turns and goes up. I really like watching tape. Julian Fleming's going to have a nice, bright future in the NFL. That was the best throw of the day, I Absolutely. think, for the He's had a couple that have been knocked down, that one at the end of the half. That was knocked down was a good throw too. They moved it to the 21 yard line. Here's a toss sweep. Henderson had a couple. We've been talking about that defensive plan, game plan by IU, the white hat leaning forward. That's Matt, defensive coordinator. At Ohio State as an advisor last year, so we worked under Jim Knowles. Yep. Who's the Buckeyes defensive coordinator? That experience at Duke. A long time, almost 10 years at Duke. He 
still looks like he'd have to show his ID to go in a sure. restaurant. But in the red zone now for Ohio State at the 19 yard line. Play fake, bootleg, throw on the runs, on the money to Stover, and he's got a first down at the 10. Well, Kate Stover is a really good receiving tight end. We've showed you his blocking, but he's got every part of the football game, and he is a weapon for this Ohio State football team. Caught 36 balls a year ago, caught two touchdowns in the Indiana game last year. Two-time captain. You don't get that honor unless you're a pretty good football player. You know what's too. also interesting is two years ago, he started the Michigan game and the Rose Bowl game at linebacker. <laughs> I'd say he's a pretty good football player. Yep. First and goal. They're going to have to earn it all. It's right at the 10-yard line. McCord looking for more. To the corner, knocked down. Nice play defensively on the corner by Kobe Miner, who had a penalty earlier in this drive, but a nice play there. I don't think Marvin Harrison thought he was getting the ball on this one. As he crosses across the field this time, it looks like he never goes into another gear on the play. I think he felt the ball was going the opposite way. Kept fading away from it almost. From our AT&T 5G pylon cam, that's how it looked on the pass breakup at the goal line. Second and goal. Kyle McCord has warmed up on this drive. Now they'll keep it on the ground to Henderson. Oh, nice. Two nice cuts there. Really, really <laughs> compact, efficient cuts. He feed <laughs> he me. Gives, feed me. He gives it to Zeke. Yeah. Feed me. Feed Watch this. One cut, one, two. Look at that. That is really nice to beat the tackle in the second there. There's some pretty good blocking there, too. The holes weren't big, but funny, they were there. Funny how that works. That works that way sometimes. Third down to goal. Last four seasons don't get much better than what they've done in the red zone. I think last year only Georgia was better. Third and goal at the four. McCord quarterback draw all the way. Not going to get there. He went the wrong way. Lost his hat in the process, but maybe got a half yard. Number 19, Chip Trainum had a block for him if he would have cut to the right. Watch the quarterback draw. Chip. Watch if he goes to the right on the quarterback draw. Up and go the other way. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of green right there. So that's going to bring out the field goal unit. Hayden Felding, who hit his first one of his Buckeye career earlier from 40. This one will be a chip shot from 22 yards out. And it's up and good. So Ohio State had a nice drive going. And missed opportunities for the Buckeye offense. Yes, yeah, good coverage on Harrison on the second down play and on third down play. For you could see that Trainum has his linebacker walled off to one way, and the quarterback runs right at the wall. 76-yard drive, but only three more points for the Buckeyes. Let's take a look at the Ford game changer. This guy has been one today. He's been the best player on the field, if you ask me, all game. Aaron Casey, number 44, wearing that honorary jersey for the second year of George Talaferro that Jenny talked about at halftime. And he has been all over the place. Had a chance to spend time, the three of us, with him yesterday. Engaging young man, just a great personality and man. And I don't, he said we're ready to play. And absolutely. He wasn't kidding. That's what I was going to say. I don't think he had any doubt that at least he was going to be ready to play. <laughs> Jalen Lucas is back to return this kick. So. Remember, remember when I talked to him, I said, you know what, Aaron? The one thing you do know is the NFL scouts will put on this tape first to <laughs> see right. how you played it. And he just looked at me like, don't I know? <laughs> there was a time when he didn't know if he's even going to be in a uniform to make this fifth-year senior and be a captain. He's playing his lights out today. Lucas won't handle this one. It's too deep. So they'll bring it out to the 25. Still limping, still limping. Invesco brings you today's scholar athletes. Emeka Buka for Ohio State's had kind of a quiet day at receiver. And Trey Walker for Indiana. 
Invesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of $1,000 to both Ohio State and Indiana's general scholarship funds. Congratulations to those two fellas. So the Buckeyes defense back out there looking at Taven Jackson, who's pretty much carried the load since Brendan Sorsby started the game. It's been Jackson's ever since. Three-yard game for Christian Turner. Brought down by Jack Sawyer. As we take you around Memorial Stadium. Second down and seven. They have not gone back to the option that often. Well, that, those dive plays are the first part of the option, and you have to establish that, but you're right. We haven't seen the pitch lately, have we? No. And there's the ride and the keep, and no game. Good defense right there is JT. Let's check in with Jenny. The Hoosiers defense is struggling right now. So for Jamari Sharp, it looked like a left quad injury. Also, Jameer Johnson, the other corner, he just went into the locker room. And adding to injury, remember DB Bryson Bonds, he is out for the game. Wow, yeah, they're getting thin back there, Jenny. Thanks. As we're under six minutes in the third quarter, and it, only a 10-point game. The illusion of going fast was the game plan. Keep the Ohio State from substituting. Run the clock down and then run the option game. Neither team has been good on third down today. Four man rush whoa, down the whoa, whoa, whoa. That that was a mix up. Up. Yeah, that was a mix up. And maybe that's why we haven't seen more passing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's no doubt that this was a miscommunication between the quarterback and the wide receiver. He thought there was going to be a curl route and number one. Never came back inside that time. McCulley stayed right, stood right behind the guy. And he, quarterback Jackson, thought McCulley would come into that hole and almost cost him an interception. Evans set to punt again. Buka on the receiving end of this kick. And they're going to have to clear out of the way. It's going to get a well, lose your roll and a beauty. Hit, yep. All the way down inside the 15 yard line with 515 remaining in the third quarter. We lost a legend overnight. Jimmy Buffett. Nothing remains quite the same. If we couldn't laugh. We'd all go insane. Rest in peace, brother. Just hand it off and let him go. 13 to 3 here. Buckeyes on top, but not by that much. A heavy favorite coming in and leading only 13 to 3 here with five minutes and change remaining in the third quarter. So Kyle McCord and company have to go to work at the 12 yard line after that 60 yard Evans punt. Train him. Trying to get to the edge and did and got a first down. Nice patience by training that time. Took his time behind the tight end G Scott. Watch number 88 coming around to the outside. 19 patient pay boom. There he goes. He got to that edge yep. to get another speed picked up the first down at the 26. They go back to him this time tackled immediately. Magnum Ferrar, he and Aaron Casey, those two linebackers, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. They've been all over the place. Magnum Ferrar, the transfer from Stanford, and Casey, those two guys are playing Big Ten linebacker. Marvin Harrison trots in front of McCord. Still two tight ends in the game. Pretty quiet day for number 18, up to the top of your screen. Buka now will stretch out farther to the bottom. McCord going down the seam. He's got his tight end on the run. Stover still going all the way to the 25-yard line. Another good throw by Kyle McCord. I'll tell you, this guy can throw the football. 48 yards that time. Again, in my opinion, college football with the receivers they have right down the middle. That's very similar to that play against Georgia when Xavier... Johnson took that one down the middle member for the touchdown yeah. against the middle linebacker. This throw is a beauty right to Stover. 
49 yard pickup as they adjust that by a yard by Stover. Big play for the tight end down to the 24 yard line. McCord, pressure coming from the backside. He comes the other way. And there's Marvin Harrison. Touchdown, Ohio State. And there's a throw from the opposite hash. This ball covers 30 yards on a rope. Might have been a penalty at the end of the step out of bounds before he caught the ball. There's a penalty marker about a yard. And into one of the, the officials zone. doesn't have his hat on either. We get another look. Yes, he, he did step out. Yes. Eight yard line. He Offense. did. Stepped out of bounds on Zana Cord. Came back in as the first to touch the pass. Clean the loss of down the previous spot. Second down. That's a loss of down, too. So right there. Just not fighting hard enough. He gets pushed, but he doesn't immediately get back. Marvin just doesn't realize he's running out of bounds. Good call by the official. Not enough real estate over there. Yeah, Stepped you got to fight your eight. way as your receiver. Once you get shoved, you got to fight your way back onto the field. His dad will tell him that, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> Why not, right? The Hall of Fame father. Uh, you know what his dad will do if I, you know blood when you talk about your son? He got pushed out. <laughs> Shut up. That's probably what he's saying. <laughs> uh, senior didn't get pushed out that much. He got pushed into the Hall of Fame with exactly. Peyton Manning. Second and ten. Trade him straight up the middle. Whew. That was in a hurry that was too. Nice. Let's take a look at this offensive line on that one. Those guys inside right at Hisman this time. The center, they roll right up the gut. The two guards, Jackson and Jones, and they clean it out. Mm. Nice opening. Yeah. Yep. Nice run to the 12-yard line. Man, Trainum's had a good game, number 19. He blocking has. and running in this game. So now McCord will get under center. With a first down at the 12-yard line. Hesitation and now heads to the edge. Got the corner all the way down, close to another first down. He almost stopped in his tracks in the backfield and then he just took off again. He goes from zero to 60 in a hurry. He sure does. Watch the guard right here, the veteran guard, Matt Jones, number 55. He reaches also Josh Fryer, number 70. Good job at tackle. Point of attack, both guys, 55 and 70, doing their job. You know, Fryer started a year ago in this game at tackle, and watching that national championship game, he actually played tight end in that game after Stover got hurt. And now Trayton stays in there, but he'll be the fullback in the eye formation with Williams behind him. Williams scored in the first quarter, and he just scored again. Touchdown, Ohio State. Man, Williams is a load. He's known for breaking tackles. A year ago, he averaged almost he was four and a half yards after first contact. You can see why they like to use him down here in this territory. Number three Ooh. goes for three tough ones. His second touchdown of the day. A lot of good stuff in that drive. Yep. Throws by your new quarterback. Running the ball when they needed to. Felding's extra point is good. And now Ohio State pulling away and feeling, okay, we might get everything we want out of this game. A little bit of a test, a little bit of a pressure, and then answering the pressure from the IU. Playing with some new guys on the offensive line, and they are growing up, doing their thing, including the blocking for number three and the touchdown run. Yeah, that time coming around, Donovan Jackson's looking for somebody again, stumbling around, but just keep moving, and... Williams finds the end zone. <laughs> 88 yards in six plays. A little under three and a half minutes to get that touchdown. You know, of uh, running back duos or three running backs in the Big Ten, 
there's quite a group. Brent Corum and Donovan Edwards from Michigan. Michigan yeah. Nicholas Singleton and Kate Allen for Penn State. And now these guys at Ohio State. I mean, you might have three of the best groups in all of college football right here. I know the top two are being matched up against anybody. And we're going to see them all in the first month of the season. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so Felling to kick off. Jalen Lucas waits back at the goal line. He's going to feel this one at about the three. Lucas, this time, is going to get bottled up, and there's a flag. He doesn't have the Jets, does he? Uh-uh. Nope. He's trying to play on a bad leg, injured earlier on a great punt return. Doesn't quite look the same. And to add to it, the short return is the penalty marker. During the return, illegal block in the back, number three, Receiving team. After this is the goal from the spot of the foul. It's first down, Indiana. So their offense hasn't done much today, and they're going to start in a hole, and that's going to bring Soresby out. Next Saturday, Armed Forces Saturday on CBS Sports Network. Special presentation of college football. Army, Navy, and Air Force all gear up for action in an action-packed triple header. It all kicks off at noon Eastern next Saturday. So Brendan Soresby back at the controls. And the run is Henderson. And he got out to the 10. 20 to 3 now with 90 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Some of the fans that had probably more hope, I think, left after the last Ohio State touchdown. <laughs> That guy should be more exciting. Second and seven. Tight end shift sides. Sorsby backpedals near his own goal line, crossing route, complete out to the 15. The Cam Camper, who had one long reception earlier in the game and hasn't had one until right there since. Brings up third down and two. I think every bit of your judgment when you're trying to judge what IU is doing in this game is remembering that they're playing against Ohio State. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's, I mean, you're never going to concede a game, obviously, the way they played. But, you know, a win over Michigan, Ohio State, or Penn State is tough. It's the mid of those games they should win are the games they got to win. You saw that the Ohio State receivers have more multi-catch. Nice catch there. And yeah, that's a nice catch. That's the fourth completion of the day, but it's good for a first down. And that's what they needed. Donovan McCulley, former quarterback. He got in the right spot that time, didn't he? Yes, he did. Thought on that previous play, he didn't get into the curl zone. This time, throw to the outside. Perfect placement of the ball. And McCulley next to the guy's catch. And that is probably going to bring the third quarter to a close as Soresby will head over to the sideline to talk to Coach Allen. We played three. Indiana has only three. And Ohio State is the number three team in the country. And they've got a 17-point cushion. Look back at some of the great players in history and the coaches as well. And a two-time Heisman winner all in the Big Ten on CBS Sports. And the Big Ten on CBS heads into the fourth and final quarter here in Bloomington, Indiana. Third-ranked Ohio State with ten points in the quarter. Indiana with one first down in the third quarter. And they trail 20-3. to three. And that first down came on the last play of the third, courtesy of Brendan Soresby. In the shotgun. Throws, far sideline incomplete. That was intended for Steinfeld, a little too high and wide. Threw it to the right guy. Made a good hard throw. It was just, what, two feet high on that yep. one. Brendan Sorsby started the game. Coach Tom Allen told us both quarterbacks would play. And Taven Jackson came in and played a good portion of the middle of the game. And now let's see if it's Sorsby's to finish up or not. Both are expected to play next week in the next game for Indiana before they kind of maybe try to settle on one. Play action. Trouble in the backfield. 
Holding call is coming. Sorsby still going to throw it and complete it after the 38-yard line to McCauley, but it's coming back. Yeah, great work by Sorsby in the pocket, but you're right. It's all going to come back. That was quite a dance when to get out of When you move around as a quarterback, the offensive linemen think you're at a certain spot. When you Holding. move, the defender moves, and they end up Offense. grabbing them. Ten-yard penalty for the previous spot. It's still second down. Steinfeld number 84 trying to, that's a tough matchup right there <laughs> that had nothing to do with my movement that time <laughs> could I have could I have that one back he just ran right over him and he's going to go to the sideline and go coach I don't know how to tell you this but I'm a tight end and I cannot no. block that guy okay. well, oh, like, he does that to a lot of people and do we have a tackle that could turn out on him because <laughs> that's not fair no that's not a guy you chip no no that's no. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 20 now. Crosby down the middle. Nice oh, throw. man. Yep, nice throw. Good catch, too. Dequeese Carter. That's his first grab of the day. That's a beauty. Yeah, and he's transferred from Fordham. Carter playing slot. Actually played outside at Fordham at wide receiver. Had to go up and get it and then hold after a big hit and a 16-yard gain. He's not used to being in there catching that one, but he did a good job on that play. Makes third down manageable. Brendan and a crossing rod, but it's going to be too shallow. Got to turn up. And there's a second hit. Got to turn up. Could have been a flag there, but Hancock, I guess, had already been making his move. Uh, Addison Kobe. Addison Kobe, if he catches that, he knows on that crossing route, the down and distance. If he catches it and goes, just turn up. By stretching it out, it plays right into the defender's hands, and they get the stop. Fans are reacting to what I said right there. Well, not yep. what I said, but what they saw on the replay there on the hit, but he was already on his way down. And no penalty. And a Another punt coming up from James Evans, who's been sensational well, yeah, today, by the way. He was second in the country last year at punts inside the 10-yard line, so this is nothing new. That time they only had 10 men on the field, so that was a good timeout for IU. Did you see the penalty that Florida had the other night against Utah? Two number threes in the yeah, game. Yeah, that's the not good. And that hurt him bad. <laughs> in passing, Indiana's offense has not done much, but quite frankly, the defense has been really good against an Ohio State offense that's used to putting up 45 points a game. I think IU fans, after they went through this football game, they wanted to come out of the game thinking positive of their team. Yeah. I would feel that way. They feel positive of the team. The thing for Ohio State right now is a little struggle of the game, but it looks like Kyle McCormick, you know, yeah. he's been making some plays. He's warmed up, especially in the second half. Yes. And they're going to go for it here in Indiana, fourth down and three. Thorsby scans the field, throws incomplete, but there's a flag, and it's going to be pass interference on Ohio State. Davis and McMinnis from that time in the coverage. Pass the transfer from Ole Miss. Defense. The ball he placed in spot of the foul. Yeah, he had his grab. You could have your down. hand on him, but you can't grab the jersey like that, that, that especially on the IU bench. That was a mugging. Right? <laughs> I mean, you might get away with that on the Ohio State uh, sideline. <laughs> So that'll give a first down to the Hoosiers. Vinosin's going, what? <laughs> Just grabbed Me? him a little bit. <laughs> I stole his wallet and everything. Uh -oh. Blitz, there's we gotta get rid of that thing. Yeah, and Michael Hall that time, a healthy Michael Hall, by the way, comes in there with the pass rush. This is one of the guys that really changed Ohio State when he got nicked last year with that shoulder. He comes in on this play, watch him inside with the pass rush. He is coming down and zeroing in on the quarterback, and that one hurt. He was tied for the team lead with four and a half sacks last year, and that was some good pressure on that one. Second down. He had a great first half of the season. Jalen Lucas trying to play on a bad leg, picked up a couple. Jenny? 
Yeah, just keep an eye on Lucas, guys. Remember, it was the start of the third when he went down. The trainers were looking at that right hamstring in his quad. At the end of the third, he was piled on top of a little bit. He actually went straight into the locker room during the break between the third and the fourth. I was told that he is just cramping up. He's out there now, but definitely something to keep an eye okay, on, guys. Thanks, Jimmy. Tough little guy. And their biggest threat probably offensively if they can get him in any kind of open space when he's healthy. That throws on the money. Nice throw out complete to the Ohio State 40 to E.J. Williams. Well, we're talking to Walt Bell, and again, no quarterback has been picked, but offensive coordinator for IU talked pretty highly of Soresby. Not a highly recruited kid. Came down to Elbeling Christian, Army, and IU. Got a good delivery right there. Nice throw. A pickup of 19 to the 39. 54 yards so far on the drive. Sorsby looking for more, trying to keep his team in the game. Going deep on the sideline, out of bounds. Incomplete. Closest guy was E.J. Williams again. Give him credit for throwing that one away, at least. You know, first down and 10. Give me second and 10. Don't make a big mistake. Remember the beginning of the game when he took that option play and went backwards? Can't have that. No. Nope. Settling in a little bit on this drive especially. There's his numbers on the day. Everybody has a look to the sideline. Two tight ends. We've got to figure it's four down territory. Anderson and Lucas in the backfield. It's Lucas trying to find a hole. There isn't much, but he might have gotten three out of it. Yeah, you can tell by the call there, the formation that IU is calling plays right now at the 40-yard line that they know they have four downs to pick up a first down. Talk to offensive coordinator Wall Hall about that. He says, we know on first down whether if it's fourth and short, we're going to go for it so I can make, you know, second down, first down, first, third down, second down. He That's said he's got an analytic guy yep. right behind him and tells him, Here's, here we go. And so we're expecting to use every down here. Third down and seven. Sorsby quarterback draw. That drew up nothing. Loss on the play and a big play by Jaden McKenzie. Yeah, this was stuff. Either the pass rush on the way to the quarterback saw it, but there was nothing there. Chambers is in the hole. Nowhere to go. He gets stuffed. Nothing on the play. Good defense. Even Cade Curry, number 92, sitting right in the hole on the play. Yeah, he maybe actually made the play. He didn't yep. get the tackle, but he messed things up pretty badly. It's fourth down and 13. Still going to go. I, I don't blame him here now. Well, they're running out of time. Ten yeah, minutes 10 left. minutes to go. And down 17. Sorsby sidesteps, throws. Ooh, good close. throw. But yep, close. Complete. Sorsby could feel the pressure and he bought time by backing up and waiting for his crossing route on the play. Hancock broke it up though on a pass intended for Kobe. He can feel the pressure coming from his right. He backs up, backs up, and then lets it go. And it's off by what? A couple feet? Nice couple throw. Inches, maybe. Yep, maybe a couple inches. But Ohio State takes over on downs after the pass breakup and they lead 20 to 3. Twisted tea, hard iced tea. The U.S. Army. Sonic. And by State Farm. Ohio State comes in having won 28 in a row in this series and trying to add number 29 to it here today. Don't forget later in the game, it's the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. You know, Ness, it hasn't been beautiful quarterbacking, but there's been glimpses in this game of the potential and the reason Ohio State recruited this guy as a five-star quarterback. He does have an arm, and he's made some great throws in this game. That over the middle of Stover. This one down the sideline from the far hash to Marvin Harrison is a bullet into the end zone. About a 35-yard throw across the field. So he's shown glimpses of what he can be as a thrower in this football game. That one to Harrison was not a touchdown because he had stepped out of bounds before he made the catch, but it was a rope that got it to him. 
And there's the numbers. Brown just played a couple of snaps so far today. And there's the throw too wide for Harrison and complete. And let's check in with Jenny. Well, guys, you can attest in when talking to Ryan Day. He said that Devin Brown was going to get significant playing time. Now, I'm over here on the Ohio State sideline. There's no apparent injury to Brown. There's no issues. He's just being a good team, a teammate on the sideline. So maybe Coach Day just playing the hot hand. Brown only has three snaps in this game. You know, people that are watching are going, what's Devin Brown wearing a 33 for at quarterback? You know, he's doing that in honor of uh, Sammy Baugh, who wore that. Right. Back in college, and there haven't been a lot of double-digit numbers. You know, I got the feeling like Woody would just play him just because he's 33. That's right, exactly. Nice job closing the opening, right? Aaron Casey again. I had player of the game, if you ask me. There's Sammy playing quarterback with number 33. He'll wait his turn for another opportunity. May even come next week. They might play both quarterbacks again. So far, for the most part, it's been Kyle McCord. Now that's the problem. I mean, you like to give both guys a chance, but you got to get your team ready for Notre Dame. I mean, at Ohio State, I mean, you only got to win the national championship to keep everybody happy. Exactly. Yeah, you go to the college football playoff three of the last four years, and what have you done for me lately? Third down and eight. Delayed blitz coming. Ohio State's line picks it up nicely, but McCord's in trouble anyway. And now he loads and goes sideline, and he completes it. And a first down for Chip Trano. Boy, nice protection. He had about three or four seconds to go across that field and look. Four-man rush, stopped, and stoned. Then he drifts out, and that's when the pressure comes, and he makes the throw after he turns to the left. Good execution by the quarterback to find his running back for the first down. And a pickup of 12 on a third and seven. So they keep going. The clock does as well. Down to eight and a half. Cord, quick throw out in the flat, complete. And another first down and then some. That one to Carnell Tate. You know, we're just thinking about if you looked into the Ohio State, everybody said the question marks going into the year to try to be national championship was offensive tackle. That looks okay. Yeah. Quarterback not settled yet. A little bit potential. But there's other problems for trying to repeat. Last year, Ohio State had eight home games. Only six this season. That's a big difference. Big, big difference. That is late throw, but complete. And also, game. you know, because every game almost counts. Only four teams in the playoff. It's not an expanded play. At Notre Dame, at Wisconsin, and at Michigan. Where they've lost the last two to Michigan back to back years, and that's not something the Buckeye fans and on like top to hear. Of that, Michigan returns all of their firepower. And they get a pretty good quarterback, too. Got it. So it's not going to be easy. I don't think anybody thought that, but you know, it's not just quarterback and tackle. Right. It's a little different schedule as well. <laughs> Here's a toss sweep to Chip Trainum, and he's got another first down. Yep, all the backs have looked good today for Ohio yeah, State. Yeah, so has Kate Stover. Watching him on tape, I really knew that was a big injury. Now, Georgia had injuries, too, but losing Stover, watch him on this play, number eight, left side of the screen, just take on the block and drive his defender right out of bounds on the play. He, he's caught the ball downfield. He's caught short passes. He's chipped in pass protection, and there he is doing the job that you want your tight ends to do. Seeing a really good tight end today, and we're going to see a really good one two weeks from now we are. in Athens. The reigning backy winner, Brock Bowers. In the red zone, first and 10 at the 18. Quick play fake, down to the end zone, a little too far for Stover, incomplete. Yep. Good coverage that time by Mangrum Farr. Again, the two inside linebackers doing their job. Ohio State's been running the ball effectively, but you still got to match up, and that's perfect coverage. Nowhere to throw the ball. And again, if you're going to miss as a quarterback, you're going to miss long like that and be able to tee it up on second down. You know, if you're going to earn the trust as a young quarterback or a rookie quarterback in the NFL, if they call a pass on first down, you can't make it a disaster. you got to have at least second and <laughs> ten afterwards. Yeah. Another play, and this one will be under center as they go back to the ground. 
And Williams, who's got two touchdowns today, takes it to the 13, maybe to the 12. Aaron Casey, another tackle. Casey, who had 10 stops last year in this game, he's going to have to come out at least one play. He lost his helmet. He's got 10 tackles again today. He and Magnum Farr and the punter have been, and the little guy, Jalen Lucas, have been really, really good for Indiana today, but there hasn't been enough offense. And as you look at that, that's the reason they're down 20 to 3. Let me look at that again. I didn't get that call. <laughs> um, lost helmet. Is that what? Yeah. He came out. Yep. And timeout exactly. taken by Ohio State. And Ryan Day's not happy about that. Third and five for the Buckeyes when we come back. 17th experience the television phenomenon from the beginning watch Yellowstone as part of a CBS event with a special look behind the scenes Yellowstone on CBS starts Sunday September 17th after 60 minutes all part of CBS fall hey Ness you know when I heard that music you know what I usually do at home quiet everybody <laughs> yeah. watching Yellowstone I'll keep it down <laughs> Big Ten, the Big Three, we get to see all three of them in the first month of the season. The Badgers, Zook was talking earlier about their spread and uh, not being an air raid, and they went back to the ground again today to at least take the lead. The Cornhuskers, where they ever rule again. Oh, boy. The Golden Gophers beat them the other night, and it's the last divisional hurrah in the Big Ten, Gary. Yeah, that's a big, it's a big change. Equitable scheduling in the Big Ten, and two teams that really had the the spread of it, IU in the east, Purdue in the west by 22 miles. <laughs> so if you're IU, you get Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State every year. Right. And Purdue doesn't. <laughs> you go that 11 and a half miles, you just like to yeah. stop right there. Rutgers, Maryland, <laughs> and IU cannot wait for that to change. The so third down and five at the 13 on the ninth play of this Ohio State drive before that timeout. And they keep it on the ground, and Andre Carter, another big play. What a great transfer. Played in the Mac at Western Michigan. He's all man. Highly recruited, one of the top transfers rated in the country, and this time, nobody gets him in time. But Andre Carter comes off the ball, and before the tight end can come across and block him, he makes the play in the back of him. And being a transfer portal guy, you don't very often see that become a captain. His teammates voted him such. That's for sure. That tells you a lot about him. Fourth down and nine. McCord on a wheel route, and he got it. Nice. A first down to Williams. Beautiful touch. Mayan Williams coming out of the backfield. We talked about how he breaks, breaks tackles, but this time a little wheel route. Try to pick, but there's nobody to pick on the play because it's a kind of a zone blitz, and he just takes them right off the, beats them right off the back. Got a 12-yard gain on a fourth and nine, and not only that, a first and goal. Perfect touch on the throw. Ohio State looking to ice things here with five minutes. And 17 seconds remaining. From the five-yard line, first and goal. Mayan Williams puts his head down and dives near the four. I just put your finger on 44 because yeah. that's who's got it, right? Double-digit tackles for the second straight year for that guy. He's a good, good player. Remember we told him yesterday, no matter what the score is, the scouts are going to look when you're way behind how hard you play or if you're way ahead or in a tight game. And, they're a little bit behind, but that 44 is still all 100%. He has played every snap like the first one. Second to go. Throw to the corner, broken up, and sent for Harrison. Yep. Yeah, that one made by Nick Toomer. Remember, Toomer had the great play earlier in the game when he knocked down the running back to force the interception. This time he's matched up against the number one receiver, everybody believes, that's going to be in the NFL draft, and Toomer does his job. Transfer from Stanford gets it done. Marvin Harrison's obviously going to have his days when he had, like last year, 77 catches and 14 touchdowns, but today he's been held in check pretty well by this Indiana defense. Now they empty the backfield. 
McCord right down the middle, almost intercepted by Magnum Farrar. Intended for Fleming. And the other linebacker, as yes, we talked about Casey, number seven, has played his heart out today and played really well. Yeah, good coverage again. They've tried to throw this play a number of times. Dislodged it. The ball was thrown with the only place it could go, and it was dislodged after the catch. Beautiful play. Now they're going to go for the field goal. Jaden Felding will try a 22 yarder. He hit one of those earlier in the game. The first year kicker, and he's had a good day. Knocks it through to tack on the lead to 20. I tell you, if you're IU fans, you got to be proud of how your football team, and especially your defense, has played in this game. Ohio State stretches their advantage to 23 to 3 with four and a half remaining here in Bloomington. Only on the U.S. Army post-game show, not only the best highlights, but if you haven't seen BJ Sport Coat, it's worth the time just to watch our U.S. Army post-game show. That comes in about four and a half minutes. Ohio State's receiving core, they're all sitting together over there, or a good portion of them. Yeah, we started featuring the two potential All-American first-round picks, and that's good defense. Not in a million years would I, I predict that. Oh, me neither. Well, well, these two guys combined last year for 151 catches, about 2,400 yards, and 24 touchdowns. Yeah, and not today. Tom Allen, a defensive coordinator, heart, and he has to love. I, I get it. Ohio State is a, a young quarterback on the road. I get all of that. But they've held Ohio State to 10 points in the first half and 13 in the second half. Jalen Lucas waits on Felding's kick. And Jalen says, I'm going to give it one more try from two yards deep. Trying to head to the far side, looking for a block. Reverses his field back to the middle, and they track him down right about where his number is, around the 12-yard line. Trying to make something happen. I tell you, Jalen Lucas has earned the respect of his football teammates, hasn't he today? Yep, for sure. Playing on a bad leg. Last game with fewer than 30 combined points. <laughs> Takes us a long ways back. Seven nothing Buckeyes. Did we do that six. game? No, we didn't do that okay, game. I just no. <laughs> <laughs> I had just turned. Well, I'm not even going to say what <laughs> age I was. <laughs> we had enough flashbacks today. All right. You know, the dark hair. Yep. All of that. I, I just wondered, was there better hair dye back then? <laughs> <laughs> I got to figure out what I was doing. <laughs> uh, funny how that works, isn't it? <laughs> There was a flag. And it's got to be the third time that's happened, isn't it, on these kickoff returns? Yeah. IU's been a block on the special teams. Jalen's done so much running around on that last one just to try to find some room to run that I could see it happening, especially on that one. At their own five-yard line now. Soresby, a little hook route out to the 10-yard line, complete, uh, complete to Camper. Wait from Ransom on the play. We hadn't called his name all, all game. Turning player. Brings up second down at four. From the 11. Under four minutes remaining. And the keeper by Sorsby goes backwards. Well, we talked about both quarterbacks will play for Indiana next week as well, and that'll be against so Indiana here's, State. So here's for Ohio, for IU. Must win Indiana State. Must win Akron. Key to their season, this game right here, if you ask me. That's the game. Those are the three they must win to have a season that they want. Third down, a long five, almost six. Right through the hands. Out of the hands. Yep. Right through Camper's hands. Should have had it. And they're going to put, put a flag on it with a late hit afterwards, it looks like. This is their best receiver from a year ago, and there's the hit. Yeah, you know, that happens really After fast. The play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit. Number eight, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. 
I wonder if we could show that from that angle, not slow motion, but I told the truck is already on it. Regular here it speed here. Watch how fast this half balls there. See, that's the tough thing. Plus, you might not know from that vantage point if he caught it or not either. Correct. Exactly. Gene, what do you think? You know, I think it, it, it does happen quick, but look, you, you have to, as an official, make that decision. Does that defensive player have enough time to make another decision, even though it's quick in the official's judgment? And I agree with it. I think he does have enough time to make a different decision there, guys. And the completion that time is to Lucas. <laughs> he gets up and he's still running with a defender draped all over him. Short gain and the clock continues to run. Be about two and a half minutes remaining in the game on the next snap. Pressure coming from the middle and down goes Sorsby. Hero Kanu. Kanu makes a sack, but Bray Lynch. Number 74 is blocking him as he makes the sack. Watch number 74 on the play right here. He's blocking and blocking, and in one arm, he just takes the quarterback down. He was blocking, blocking, and almost holding, and he still made a nice play. Exactly. Of course, the great defensive line coach for Ohio State you know, was at Penn State when we were back in the league. Larry, Larry Johnson. Johnson. Yep. Sorsby, pocket collapsing again. That one broken up, almost intercepted. And it'll bring up fourth down and long. Yeah, by you not built for this. You know, passing, drop back passing. They've been running an option game. That's how they were going to attack. And uh, drop back passing is not what they're going to be in 2023. So nine completions in 20 attempts between the two quarterbacks. And under 100 yards passing combined. You know, when we talk about those two, we also have to remember that Dexter Williams in about four or five weeks will be in the mix as well. The yeah. starter last year at the end of the year that had that win over Michigan State and started so well against Purdue. And got hurt in the Purdue game and still rehabbing. And, he has been taking practice snaps, so yep. might be ready. And that play. injury was just no one around him. He stops the throw and blows his knee. Well, the Buckeyes have it back with a 20-point lead and just 144 remaining. Ryan Day will have his 46th win as the head coach of the Buckeyes. 46 and 6 is not too bad. We'll say this, Ryan Day will get a win. Bit of an ugly win for Ohio State, I think. However, good teaching win going forward. He yeah. can climb all over this football team for the next two weeks going into that Notre Dame game. In three be, weeks, what is it, three weeks from now? Three weeks, I think, yep. yeah. It'll be 32 and 2 in Big Ten play. The two is the one that stuck in the Buckeyes <laughs> yeah. fans' craw. And another timeout. This will add one more win to this streak for Ohio State, too, which is 28 games as of right now. And if you look at the longest tackling win streaks against a single opponent, next in line is AM over TCU and Oregon 23 times in a row over Idaho. All-time record is Notre Dame over Navy. So speaking of that for IU, right now, the schedule came out for 2024 in the Big Ten. Prior to Oregon and Washington coming in, Indiana did not play Michigan and Ohio State next year. And they were like, this is all oh, right. <laughs> this is this is a deal. And then everything changed. Everything changes. Now they have no idea what's going on. With Devin Brown getting some more work incomplete. Is that the first throw for him? First attempt? That's the first one I have. Look for one on my screen. Yep. So McCord's day is done. Brown will clean up in the next 140. Don't you love talk radio in Columbus this week about the Columbus, right? <laughs> Brown all day to throw. Throws it out on the flat, completes it to Hayden, Allen Hayden, and he's brought down immediately. Yep. Ohio State schedule, we've kind of touched on it or mentioned 
what they've got coming up in the weeks ahead. So it's Youngstown, Western Kentucky, and there's that one Gary's been talking about at Notre Dame. Six ats. That's what stuck out to me. And obviously the last one at Michigan. It'll be interesting at Wisconsin with a former Buckeye running the program sure, there. That's for sure. Brown. He's going to bring it out and he's going to throw late and incomplete. So that didn't go so well for Ohio State either. Dave number 33 a little bit of a chance. But they'll have to kick it away. So there's the coaching going on which is good. Because you know you don't get hit in practice. Right. You're wearing a different well, color we're, jersey. So only, just being back there in, in real fire. The, the only real thing that is, you know, the difference in this game that we would have never, you know, the first part about the receivers, okay? Yep. Never would have thought that. Short yardage stops kept, I think, Ryan Day from rotating the quarterbacks. I thought for sure we would see both quarterbacks pretty evenly in this game. And that's the exact thing that he told Jenny when he talked to her at halftime. So the punters have been relatively busy, especially James Evans, but mirko has got to kick it away again. Camden Jordan is back deep now as Jalen Lucas Day is done as a return man as well. Not sure what's holding up the show here. Another timeout. Okay, so fourth and 17 and a timeout. And it gives us time for our special edition of the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Our play of the game. Here's how I called it. I have no idea what I said. <laughs> McCord going down the seams. Got his tight end on the run. Stover still going all the way to the 25 yard line. Another good throw by Kyle McCord. I'll tell you, this guy can throw the football. 48 yards that time. Gary made the Jersey Mike's play the game. I, I thought that was a great call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there's a the guy that caught it. And now <laughs> we're lining our subs up here in the booth as we get another <laughs> punt, finally. And a fair catch around the 32. So 50 seconds and a couple of timeouts for the Hoosiers, but they trail by 20. And Soresby will finish the game as he started the game. Well, they got work to do their quarterback position without a doubt. Yeah, I remember a few years ago, maybe even six, eight years ago, Alabama played Virginia Tech first game and it was really, really ugly and they ended up winning all their games. I think, you know, first games is just sit back, don't overreact, keep coaching and, uh, you know, get the guys ready for the long grind of the season. Grind just starting today here in week one. Mm, tough run. Pick up a lot three. You talked about who impressed you the most today on both these teams. I think I have a pick. It's okay, going to be on the losing. You're going to be on the losing side. All right, I'm going to go offense then. Uh, you're going to go Aaron Casey, right? I am, yeah. I'm going to go Chip Train in number 19. Okay, he did play well. Yeah. And Mayan Williams had two touchdowns and he ran hard. So all the guys in the backfield for Ohio State earned their keep. But you talk about a guy that made a ton of tackles and played the last snap as hard as the first, number 44 for Indiana. But they come up short. Number three team in the country had their hands full, though, with a stingy Hoosier defense. Not enough offense for Tom Allen and Ryan Day and the Buckeyes. Weeks and weeks from now, Buckeye fans probably won't remember that they only won 23 to 3 over Indiana. Unless they lose. <laughs> Unless they lose, and then this will be a bad omen. <laughs> Longest active winning streak continues. 29 straight now for Ohio State over Indiana. 
Final score, 23-3. to three. Ryan Days with Jenny Dell on the field. All right, Coach, got the first win of the season after a little bit of a slow start. Are you encouraged with the way that this team responded? I like the third quarter, and I thought we, we really kind of turned it on in the fourth quarter there. We didn't quite get that done. Uh, I'm glad we got the win, but certainly a lot to work on. And you stuck with this guy right next to me the majority of the day, Kyle McCord. How did he perform out there? I thought he had some really good moments, you know, and so there's a lot to learn from, a lot to grow on. Got the first W, and that's the, that's the, that's the point. Congratulations on the win. All right, Kyle, you have waited patiently for this opportunity. What can you take away from this experience? Yeah, I think there's a lot to learn from it. I'm excited to go back and watch the film. I feel like as an offense, we, uh, you know, had our moments, moved the ball well, um, and scored a few times, but at the same time, I think there's a lot to improve upon, so I'm excited overall. I thought, you know, we did all right, but, you know, left some points on the field for sure. So how can this offense and this team grow and learn and move on from this win? Yeah, I think just taking every game um, and, you know, taking the, the highs and the lows and, and learning from it and just continuing to evolve and be better. Um, you know, I know there's definitely a few throws that I would like to have back, a few plays that I would like to have back, and I'm sure, you know, the rest of the guys would agree. You know, there's a few plays they want to clean up, so that's the beauty of it. You know, we get to come back next week and improve and keep going. All a learning process. Yeah. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Well, you know, solid. 239 is not a bad day. Not bad. I thought he showed the potential that they'd like to have down the road. That's the biggest thing for Kyle McCord. In this game, he showed glimpses. And it's a win for the Buckeyes. 1-0 on the season in 29 straight over Indiana. That's going to do it for us. For Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell, Gene Steratore, our entire CBS crew, Brad Nessler, saying so long from Bloomington. Final score, Buckeyes 23, the Hoosiers 3. Stay tuned for more college football action tonight on CBS. Texas Tech taking on Wyoming. But first, we'll send you back to Adam Zucker and company for the U.S. Army postgame show right after these messages. See you next week from Ann Arbor.